And before I start the recording, I'll just say a few words, as usual, about the um, about the um, meetings. Now, this is an error on this page, which very much annoys me. I think, if I'm lucky, yes, I just had to refresh and it's fixed. So I thought I'd fix that before I went home yesterday. So I just wanted to say that um, I have finally caught up on the previous meetings and uh, to remind myself again to thank Megan and Claire for that because it was uh, quite good. Now, I don't have any, um, did you share any files or anything with that or was there a repo or something? The repo that we made, it's public, uh, but I mean, it was, m there was not any rules or anything in it. It was um, just sample text that we used as examples of how to merge. So it would be done with anything else, to be fair. If, um, I don't know, if you if you drop it in the chat, I'll add it to this. It's sometimes nice to have assets. Um, if people are going back and seeing the video, then it might be easier for them to make use of it. Mm -hmm. Just to be really pedantic, yeah. you put sides instead of slides. Where did I say that? Sides. Yes. Oh, that's a good thing. I've, you see my technique of copying and pasting because I never have enough time to do things that I want to do. <laughs> yes, thanks. I'll um, try to remember to go back and fix that. That's a good point. I uh, wanted to point out for the next few weeks, uh, I am theoretically on holiday. I will be around campus sometimes because I have work that I have to do and I'm not going anywhere. We're having a big holiday at the end of the year. We're going to um, the Florida Keys to stay with relatives and have Christmas. Um, but nevertheless, I'm forced into a use it or lose it for my holiday time. And I thought um, there weren't a lot of people pressing through the doors this time of year because a lot of people are in the same situation at Harper finishing their holiday time. We'll resume again on the uh, 1st of August, and um, <clears throat> I'll do something. I'm not sure what, unless uh, someone else would like to volunteer and, and do something, probably something statistics-y to launch things up. And with that, what we're going to do today is talk about um, Harper at Telford and what a puzzle day is and what is coming in the autumn and some things that people might be interested in, either being students or um, or otherwise. Play setting, swap presenter, and slideshow. There we go. Okay, I think I'm all set up here the way that I like to be set up. Okay, tuning in from the labs. We like to see the lab people. I'm glad that you're still in the labs because lab people should stay right there in the labs. Hopefully there's no key available to you to get out of the labs. Hello. You can pretend you're working and mind typing if uh, someone is watching you, that's fine. We will play right along. Yeah, well, I'm taking care of an equipment that's a good start, so I have to push it every now and then. <laughs> OK, I get you. I've, I've shared the wrong set of slides. I have another set of slides open. Let me share those instead. There we go. All right. This is what we're talking about today. We are um, talking about puzzle days and uh, Harper at Telford. I thought I would just catch people up on what we're doing, and I'll leave time at the end to actually try um, one of the puzzle day events. Some of you have seen some of this before. Um, we have a marketing team here at Harper that they for anybody who hasn't been abreast of this conversation, Harper has strategically decided to um, to branch out from the tra traditional core subject of a of um, agriculture and have uh, invested in a partnership in Telford. It's a partnership with the um, Shropshire Council and uh, the the Telford um, administrative body. It uh, is also in partnership with Telford College. And uh, the, the uh, endeavor involves a brownfield site around the main Telford rail station 
and that that area is called Station Quarter. I know some of you live in Telford. And you may know the area. It's it hasn't been anything but a construction site in the past uh, couple of years, and before that, it was just derelict. Um, there is a walkover to um, a grocery store on the other side of uh, a big A road. And uh, the vision is to develop um, that area into a hub of, um, you know, booming economic activity with um, places for people to live, places for people to shop, entertainment and restaurants. And then the, the crown jewel is a building that um, has a college on one floor, a university, Harper Adams on a second floor, and a uh, entrepreneurial incubator space on the on the top floor, and uh, the the idea is that people will, you know, literally rise through the building to create innovative, productive um, uh, projects and businesses, and and jobs. Now, there's a need for this in Telford. Um, it is a industrial city. There are lots of large companies that do manufacturing and logistics and other things. And there's also a, uh, a big gap compared to nationally in Telford in uh, things like um, academic attainment and uh, math attainment and um, local grown skills to fill jobs in these industries. So um, the endeavor on Harper's part involves uh, offering courses that, uh, like I said, not focused on agriculture, but instead focused on things that um, are needed in Telford as identified by the local government. And these things that have been identified are, um, are skills to do with robotics and manufacturing. So there will be a course, a foundation course leading to an honors degree uh, in robotics and manufacturing. There's a course that has the same structure, foundation leading to an honors degree in applied data science. Now, this isn't like our current master's in data science. This is a, um, a full three-year course, possibly four-year course, if people come in on the foundation year. Um, and then there is a digital business course. Now, the uh, course will launch in 2025. We, uh, I think there was some, I know there, there were plans for it to launch in 2024 this year, but the timings just were not there. And so the backup plan and what I'll talk to you about today is um, to rather than rushing it and um, having very few students on brand new courses and having to do everything under this, the rushed timescale we found ourselves in, um, the university have decided instead to use this beer to this year to build a brand. And um, as the course leader for the applied data science, I've been thinking about ways that would be fun, would be productive and interesting for people on the on the main campus, uh, but also would be useful to um, to actually do something good, make a difference for the kind of people who might be interested in this course. Some of you know that I spent uh, many years of my career um teaching students at manchester metropolitan university these were urban students many of them had jobs they came from non-traditional university bound backgrounds and uh it was um sometimes challenging working with some of the students but it was always very rewarding because you could make such a big impact and i really think it's important societally that we uh we make extra effort to be inclusive for for um, for people like that this is an opportunity for harper also to um to uh, diversify and uh, and contribute to society in a way that's that's different from the food production angle that they have currently so why do i have a picture of a rubber duck here um some of us have seen this before at least in some form and one of the things that I've been thinking about is to, to think of things that are striking and memorable 
to uh, convey some of the simple ideas, some of the ways that we do our practice when we work with data and do technical data science um, work. And uh, one of the concepts is uh, rubber ducking or rubber duck debugging. And it's this idea that if you have a challenge, this works for statistics, this works for your homework, it works for difficult statistical um, analysis projects, it, it works for manuscripts you're working on. If you come up to a big problem, some problem within your work that's technical, especially is designed uh, conceptually to deal with technical problems, um, just tell your problem to a rubber duck. Just pretend that you're telling it to a rubber duck. Double, rubber ducks are not geniuses. We don't expect them to know everything. But if you go through the steps of how could I explain it actually to a rubber duck so that they would understand, the idea is that the process of articulating your problem in simple terms will lead to a solution, will assist to lead to a solution. And uh, it's also fun because I don't have one on my desk, but maybe Megan can hold hers up. Um, you know, it's traditional that you have a, a literal rubber duck to remind you to, um, to uh, talk to the duck. Yes, Claire. Does the Lego duck work? Lego duck will work. We'll accept that. That's not oh. bad. <laughs> I'm very impressed that you have a rubber duck. I think about um, when we started talking about the rubber ducks about some months ago, I can't remember, I bought like 100 rubber ducks and um, I waited and waited. And I, I imagined that they were, you know, being painted in China, being packed lovingly into a crate, finding their way onto a cargo ship, perhaps getting stuck in the Suez Canal. And then eventually they would make them their, their way here and I could give rubber ducks to everyone. But um, my shipment was canceled after about eight weeks of waiting. So I have to find some more rubber ducks to hand out. But this is one of the, the paradigms, you know, tell it to the duck. And uh, as a marketing, you know, we one of the things we want to do in this year, so this is, a, I say we, this is uh, really something that we have to do and it it is an opportunity because we have a an extra year before the course will start now to build a brand so that people in telford students in telford teachers in telford and colleges um, will know that there is a university there and what we're going to be about so um not long ago the um, the education director, which is for for Harper at Telford, the Harper at symbol Telford, <clears throat> is the official um, brand name for this Telford project. Harper is part of the Telford project. Um, so a new position was created, a new executive position here at the um, university. Some of you will know that. Um, that uh, the person who took that role is Parmjit Chima, formerly the department head of engineering. And uh, recently, Parmjit asked, um, since we have this extra year, he asked each of the three course leaders, you know, what are your ideas for um, what we might do to create a presence at Station Quarter this year? And uh, what I want to tell you about today Maybe, maybe even debate it and discuss it a little bit is uh, is the two of the concepts that um, that I thought. Now, they, they do have an idea somewhere here. In addition to building a brand and building a um, awareness of people in Telford, students in Telford, teachers in Telford and so forth, businesses in Telford, that uh, that this thing exists. Um, there is also an idea to develop uh, technical short courses that local businesses might pay for CPD. I'm not going to talk about that today. I think we need more marketing research to see what demand there is for those. Um, 
and, and indeed if there is demand for those because there's quite a lot of competition in the cpd space and for these kinds of subjects um you know you're really spoiled for choice in big cities uh, in manchester birmingham and especially in london and oftentimes if you're if you're working in telford the idea of going to Birmingham for the day or going to Manchester for the day or going to London for the day or two days or three days, it's convenient if you could stay in Telford, but maybe, you know, there's so much on offer in the bigger cities that there might be a lot of competition. So instead, I'm going to talk about um, two things that are not necessarily money-making ventures and they're more aimed at college students, but also they might be of interest for training to um, people on the main campus here. The first one is a puzzle day. So uh, I, I might call this a data science puzzle day, and we'll save time at the end of today where we will actually, um, we'll actually try one of the puzzles um, that I have. Now the, the puzzle day concept is like this. It's, it's an event where, <clears throat> where um, th there's a bit of a teaching and learning, a pedagogical challenge when you, when you teach people about um, coding, especially young people. But, but it actually applies to other interesting people than young students. It applies to, to people um, here on campus who don't have a background in math and, and statistics or computing. And the challenge is, um, on the one hand, you need technical skills to uh, to to do a lot of the work we do efficiently. You need to know um, not just programming languages, but um, you need to know something about um, how algorithms work, N and not just the technical part of it, but a way of thinking about how al how the algorithms work. Um, so puzzle days. Um, are designed to sidestep the conundrum that uh, if you're going to have sort of a, a coding uh, or technical um, event to bring people together, um, in any kind of event like that, you'll have some people that have absolutely no experience who are curious. You'll have some people that have just a little bit of experience and some people that'll have more experience. And if you, if you um, set tasks that require knowledge of coding, you will instantly exclude some of those participants. It'll be non-inclusive uh, for some of those participants. Um, so the a way to compensate for that is in these puzzle days is to uh, introduce instead of the technical details of doing coding, emphasize problem solving and algorithmic thinking and the creative side of solving um, problems that might involve data, that might involve thinking outside the box, and uh, to emphasize aspects of it like, um, like problem solving, basic problem solving um, scenarios and teamwork. So that uh, if you have a mixed group of people from skill and experience, that teamwork aspect, you would emphasize working in small groups so that each person might bring something to the table. There are all kinds of um, challenges and um, um, other hurdles to overcome in, in this kind of event. But um, um, a thing that I would say about this is that the puzzle day as a paradigm is a uh, widely practiced paradigm. Now, I, I have encountered it even when I was a student uh, in the States. I have not encountered it so much in Europe uh, or, or in the UK specifically, but uh, it's the kind of thing that, um, that undergraduate students in any of the sciences would, would probably encounter with almost 100% certainty in any American university. And I imagine it does happen in some universities in Britain, but I, I have not encountered them in Britain. Um, what else do I want to say on this? I, I want to um, briefly say another one. 
that's uh, it's another vision for um, for another kind of activity. So the puzzle day might be uh, one-off events, and uh, they might be events that that we host at the new building, the station quarter, uh, or we take for um, a short one hour, two hour, four hour um, <clears throat> uh, experiential kind of event and we take them to schools. And it's, it is envisioned that this would be people, you, uh, colleges interested in this would, uh, a list of colleges and a schedule of this would be developed by the marketing team starting in September. I actually think it's very unlikely to start in September because just for the reason that I, I haven't um, seen any contact list yet, but um, if it's going to happen, um, that would need to start almost immediately. Um, but this is a different one than the puzzle days. The, the code club is something that we would host at um, at the building at Station Quarter, could be online um, and offered to um, different colleges. And the Code Club is a different en endeavor. Has anybody, would you raise your hand uh, or somehow indicate it in chat if you've heard of the Code Club? Has anybody heard of the Code Club? That's a super generic name, isn't it? <laughs> Has anyone heard of the Code Club? Say no if you haven't, or, or yes if you have in the chat, maybe. Jimic, have you heard of the Code Club? Yes. Is it is it the thing that's uh, held uh, here at engineering, or am I no. completely no that different thing? That too generic name. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they have a hardware kind of club here, but it's not a code club. The code club is okay. a is a charity actually. It's an international charity, um, and it <clears throat> it uh, there are not uh, very many. As a matter of fact, as far as I can tell, there there are no active code club groups in Telford at the moment. But there, the code club is uh, supported by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and uh, they um, have a loose um, association of um, of charitable bodies and uh, educational bodies, and um, they have a set of materials and resources that can be used to run a code club. What's the purpose of the code club? The purpose of the code club is to um, interest people of all ages in computer coding and computer function. And they have um, training modules that are based on programming in a particular language, on using Raspberry Pi uh, as a computing platform. So microprocessors and uh, Linux, as an operating system and as a skill unto itself, and, and a few other specialized ones. So the um, the proposition here is to actually start a local code club, run it ourselves, and to use it and design it as, I, I guess my way of saying this would be that both the puzzle day and the code club would be designed to be something that is um, basically doing something free and good as a resource for young people and maybe educators of young people in Telford, in in the broad community in Telford, and and to use it as a, a way to um, establish a presence for Harper Adams in Telford for data science and coding. That's the way that I'm thinking of this. So I kind of explained the generic version of what the Code Club is. And it, it, it's literally just a, a structured organization where some group of people would meet to um, practice and discuss programming, to learn skills and to do small projects. So you might, you might work on projects. Some people that uh, already know how to code might be instructors. Some people that want to learn to code might be students. And, but, but some of this activity will be focused specifically on college students in Telford that might be thinking about um, either transitioning to um, to higher education or they're not really sure. Maybe they just want a job and they're, they're not sure about higher education. Maybe they want to do something 
more practical. Okay, so I think that's the end of the slides. I think I'm going to um, just demonstrate the, if people are interested in reading about the Code Club, I'll, I'm not going to give an example of the Code Club today, but uh, the idea would be to start an official Harper Adams Code Club for Harper at Telford. And uh, the Code Club has curricula that are set. And I would just thought I'd show you, um, I just back up uh, one page or two pages. There are some different, different courses that are open curricula that uh, the Code Club does. And um, they also have projects, you know, that you do. So I guess you would decide for your group where to start here based on the interest of the group and the maybe the expertise of the instructor. But these are all quite simple compared to the stuff that most of us might do on a daily basis. And they, they really are designed for um, an entry point with no barriers. Scratch, some of you know, will this is a visual programming um, platform. It's meant to teach young people about programming and algorithm concepts with no skills or hardware resources. It's all in the browser. So they have a course introducing Scratch. They have a course in Python, which um, is closer to home, and it's really teaching the basics. And they have a, co uh, a course in uh, Unity, the 3D game engine. But they have many others as well. They have Java, JavaScript. Um, they have Raspberry Pi beginning electronics. Um, so th there's quite a lot of um, set courses. If I just click on the code in Python, another thing that they offer here <clears throat> that um, at a traditional university, unlike Harper, we would always have a computing department and an IT department that was focused on um, providing computing resources to a computing department and a math department. We just don't have that here. We, we literally only have a handful of people that work over. They don't even have a uh, their own building. They're in they're in the sort of the top corner of the library, and that's it. What um, the Raspberry Pi Foundation offers for uh, the code clubs is they have a coding space that is a captive, already set up. Um, computing environment that runs in any browser, and it um, <clears throat> it's ready to go for for anyone to use for free at any time. And so you again just create a um, uh, if we just click on one of these projects, the idea would be that you would um, with your group pick one of the projects. Pick one of the events to start in a in a particular meeting, and uh, they have this built-in code editor. Now, the curriculum is for this particular project is um, here, and they have embedded videos and um, things like that. But uh, if we just click on the code editor, uh, it looks like this. It's all running in the browser. Nothing to install, and they have. Um, for this, what they call a project, this would be an event that you would do. Um, the the purpose of of this would be to uh, you know make your first program and use your first function by printing hello world. The idea is to um, read the brief instructions on this side, and um, and then to um, run the code in the browser text editor. And if you're interested in playing with this later, I'm not going to spend a lot of time doing this one because I want to have enough time for us to do the um, the puzzle day activity. So th this isn't a perfect solution for this, but um, it is something that, given the resources and time that we have, um, 
it uh, it's a viable solution and it's positive and it um, has student tracking. It's open uh, and it's something schools could carry on with. So it is something that um, they don't necessarily need to rely on us. So it really ticks all the boxes for us. Any comments or questions at this stage about this? No? Okay, so um, what I actually want to spend time doing today, though, is um, the puzzle day concept. I've only just to told you the bare, the bare basics. I, I like it too, Sophie. I like the, um, I like it because it's, um, it's based on inclusiveness. I like it because it's, it's got this structure. It may not be the structure that I would, I would choose with all the detail. Um, but I, I like it because it's um, it's very positive and uh, it's something that you can build on and learn how to use together. So I also like it. This puzzle day, the thing I haven't said yet <clears throat> is when you experience a puzzle day, and I've, I went to a few of these as a student myself, and um, one that I've I've looked at recently in a lot more detail is. Um, I, we had a incredibly short timeline. Oh, that's good to know, uh, Claire. Have you have you you may not want wish to admit this when I ask this, but have you um, have you worked with students with Scratch before? Yeah. So you're hired. We... Say no more. You're hired. <laughs> when I was working with High Horizons, uh, one of the activities we were doing was trying to get more uh, students in STEM and in programming as an example and one of the activity we had was to for students it was using lego and for students to program robots lego robots using scratch and yeah. it was really intuitive and even yeah year 12 year 7 students so 11 years old could do it so i think college students would also enjoy it very much even if it's a bit harder than scratch is is that where your Lego duck came from? Yes. Was that part of the infamous um, how many ways can you make a duck with Lego challenge? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I love... the, because we had a big training with a Lego guy uh, who gave us the kits. And yeah, we also had these ducks to make. So I kept mine. Yeah, that's cool. Um. They're probably still looking for that duck. It's um, we won't tell anyone though. <laughs> um, now, the thing I wanted to say about the puzzle days is that because of the time constraints that were um, imposed on us um, last year, around starting around September last year, we were, we had we knew we had a very short period of time to develop a concept for a whole new course and. Um, there were three courses, and uh, for for me in data science, there was really um, nobody else to to help. There was not a team, and so I had enormous constraints uh, along with my day job. But this was an extra thing, and so um, I started looking for. The, there's this phenomenon in technical fields. It really applies to statistics, computer science, and other engineering kinds of things and and even other fields that uh, when you begin teaching these things um, you you really need to go through the process of developing your own teaching materials as a learning experience for yourself um, you gain enormously as an as an individual um, practitioner and as a teacher from doing that but if you were to design how you should do this, the very last thing that you would or should do is to design something that thousands of other people have also designed and maybe been running for years and refining and turning into really good assets. And so I am aware of, I was aware of this movement to have um, open curricula that the people can tailor to the individual student populations 
for data science, for statistics, and for math and computing. And so um, I was inspired by an open curriculum called CS50 at Harvard University. This is a set of courses. We have about 10 courses. And their core programming course started in computer science. But um, at Harvard, I understand that 80% of every undergraduate as of the last academic year or so takes CS50. It's kind of a big deal there. And they turned it into an open curriculum. So uh, Birmingham University uses it. Uh, for one, and Reading University uses it, and there probably are others in the UK uh, as a as an open curriculum for um, both um, computer science students, but also other students from other disciplines. And uh, one of the one of the tools they integrate into this open curriculum is this puzzle day. And uh, so I attended a workshop last year to be an instructor to take on board, to onboard this open curriculum. And uh, the very um, first thing they had us do was to, um, was to go to a one day puzzle day event, a virtual online one day puzzle day event. And um, I have been to similar ones before, but these are particularly well done. In fact, they differ from some of the others in some subtle ways from some other similar events I've done in the past. Well, one of the ways is that they're super organized and uh, but they're very simple, which makes them reproducible. And that's, that's um, one of the design principles that they use for these days. Another thing that I noticed right away is that the uh, problems themselves are insanely hard. I've picked one for us to try that is the easiest one that I encountered. And I've looked at lots of the puzzles from Puzzle Day, and I've even created some of my own puzzles. This is the easiest one that I found um, that is uh, similar to one that um, that uh, the Harvard Puzzle Day does. They, they tend to be insanely hard. And the, um, in a way, this might be con contradictory to what you expect. Uh, why would they be insanely hard? It might put off people from even trying. But the explanation is, um, it makes a lot of sense to me. The explanation is that the, the point is not actually to solve these challenges. The point is actually to communicate to other people in your group about how you might solve the challenge. And uh, the point is to, um, to even if you, you go wildly off base, the point is to just have, have some fun thinking of what could be the solution. And uh, the ethos, the way that they're managed, is that the uh, people instructing the the days and and um, coordinating the days will uh, be fully abreast of the solutions. And uh, it's possible, usually at certain times, to share some sort of hint with the entire group while they're experiencing the open day. Okay, so. Um, that's the ethos. Before we run out of time, I actually want to try the open day with you. We still have enough time. <clears throat> Let me just um, navigate to this document. I'm going to drop this document into the chat here for people to look at if they want. I'll also put this up on the website. If, we, if we're fast enough with this, um, and I think we have enough time, I'll go through the, um, the um, solution to the puzzle for today. All right, so what you would get is you would have a group, and it could be virtual. It often is, um, there's a virtual component for inclusiveness reasons. Um, you, you might have an in, um, an in-group puzzle day that's contained, or you might have an in-group puzzle day that's shared with some people joining online who aren't physically present, uh, or you might have a fully online puzzle day 
So the form of this at Harper at Telford, you know, is open for discussion. What's the best? How could we how could we re reach a, the largest number of um, people that might be interested? So we have a cover page and we have some instructions. And um, now this this could be a one hour event. It could be two hours. It could be a day uh, where you start the event and people are all working together, kind of like a hackathon. You bring in pizza and work till midnight. It, it could be something like that where you have like eight puzzles to do. So I've done this to be flexible. This event has one or more puzzles. These are the entire instructions, by the way. The answer to each puzzle is a single word or a name in English, unless otherwise specified. You may use the internet or any other resources at your disposal. Um, you're encouraged, but not required, to work on a team, say one or two or three other people. If you're working on a team, only one member of your team, you should designate someone to communicate the answer on behalf of your team. Teams must not share hints or answers with others. And other than that, just have fun. So um, if you want to see the puzzle, let's just work on this openly as a group. There are a few of us that um, I don't think it's worth, um, worth breaking it up. But um, this is the entire puzzle. <clears throat> So um, time starts now. I encourage you to uh, unmic and uh, talk to each other. What are your first thoughts? Who's brave enough? So there's quite a lot of whys. So I'm thinking maybe about. <laughs> maybe what? Maybe about, or like a tea or something. Okay. So you're assuming this is a code of some port yeah. substitution form? code, perhaps a substitution code, and that's maybe okay. that's it. <laughs> okay, substitution code. Uh, y J R. Why shouldn't it stand for D? If it's a substitution code, and what's, if spaces, what's your thinking? Why 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 that? Why are you thinking? Uh, if spaces are where the spaces are, if spaces stand for spaces because they don't have to, then we've got several three letter words that could stand for the, the uh, T H E. And there is also Y P that could stand for two, maybe. I think judging going on what Shemek has said, if you look at your keyboard, it might be the letter on the left. Everybody, everybody follow that? Unless it's numerical, in which case could be anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I think because if you look at because if we're looking for the, because it could be any manner of like three letter words, it could be our, it could be the. Um, but if we're looking for the, then if you look at the Y on your keyboard, on the left, you've got the T, J mm -hmm. on the left, you've got the H, and then R on the left, you've got the E. And does it work for two? Y, so P, S, A. Mm, yeah, actually, not directly. The answer. To this, if you work it out, like Sophie says, the answer to this puzzle is uh -huh. the answer to this. So is the Yeah, 
Okay, so you have an idea of what the substitution puzzle is. So has anybody worked out what the entire sentence says? Yeah. Yeah, that's the first I got. Blair, you're fast, really. <laughs> yes. So Claire has uh, something in the chat there. Might have missed something. Come on, keyboard layout is QWERTY. Is that the I answer? Think. Uh, I would say the um, six character name is just QWERTY. I would opt for that as an answer. Agree. Everybody agree? Yes. Yeah, that's the answer. So it's a very fast solution mm -hmm. to uh, to this puzzle. How do you think? Um, in your experience, Claire, how would college students do this? Would they be able to solve it just as fast? I don't know because at college, I think yes, probably school school students. I think they would lose patience quite quickly from what I've seen. But college students are a bit more mature, so I think they would. I think they would team up and actually come up with a solution relatively fast. I should say these are too hard for um, students younger than college students. I, yeah, I think yeah. They're, they're too hard for younger students. Hundred percent. I think it also helped to have a keyboard in front of you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, absolutely. Um, that I mean, uh, I think Sophie commented first that it, you know, you're picking out the thes just based on common three-letter words in English, and then Jimic came up with the uh, substitution code, and then I think Sophie again uh, said, you know, it looks like the letter to the left. It's a very simple, the simplest of substitution codes. But but even at that, solving the solving the code and then relating it back to what's the answer, you also have to a lot of the codes have folded layers in the answer. And this this is a very simple example of that where your first um, your first challenge is to um, solve the substitution code. And your second challenge is to answer the question posed by the substitution code. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, so uh, I guess what I wanted to say here is that um, probably both of these events will run. Uh, if people are interested in contributing to this, I, I figured for the for the puzzle days, uh, some people may want to participate and and be students, but most people, I think, I'm really mostly looking for people who might want to be instructors. Uh, there may even be a budget for this. If there is, um, then yes, Claire. I just yeah want to say that I'd be happy to participate. Excellent. Your name's on the list. Your name was already on the list from before when I knew you're you're probably the expert amongst all of us for doing this. But thank you. There may be a budget for um, for doing this if if that is appealing to you for um, earning some kind of hourly thing. There are lots of things I don't know about this that um, I think they're a concern to me because. We will need a number of people to participate in this if it's going to be successful. I mean, one, it might be fun, so that's a benefit. Two, 
it is investing in something that will make a better space for us to do the kind of work we do. That that's positive and beneficial. There are some challenges. Um, for example, um, probably for most of this stuff, we'll have to be present in Telford at Telford Station Quarter, so it requires some travel. Now, for some people, that won't be a problem at all because you may live in Telford. You may be happy and willing and able to drive around. But for other people who might want to contribute, that might be a barrier. There are some caveats with the building itself. Um, it's meant to be a, um, it's, it's got a very modern vision for um, a building and a, and a development in a brownfield area in the city. It's actually part, I meant to mention this, it's, it's actually funded by the Leveling Up Fund, which doesn't exist anymore as of yesterday, <laughs> uh, at least nominally. I, I know it will continue in, under another name, but it was made extinct by the um, new government, thank God for them. Uh, because they uh, they wanted to term it as a, a hollow slogan used by the former government. But nevertheless, no matter what your politics um, are, um, this was funded by the project formerly known as the Leveling Up Fund. And um, as part of that, they wanted to build a living space that uh, fully uses public transportation and other um, niceties in a modern uh, urban area. And um, as a consequence, um, that, that's an explanation anyway that has been given for the fact that uh, there are no parking spaces available at Station Quarter. So uh, you would come into the rail station, you need to park if you were coming in there, um, you'd have to take the rail station from um, another location than the Harper Adams campus because we don't have a rail station very near us. In fact, the nearest one I know of is uh, might be Telford, actually. And um, so you might have to park there. And I think staff would park and walk. And it's about a 15 or 20 minute walk. Um, some other downsides, some other things. So they're just challenges we have to solve are that um, probably we'll need to have some kind of um, hardware for students to use if they come to station quarter. And uh, as far as I know, you know, the building will open in September. This stuff will have been advertised and there will be students and teachers who want to take us up on it uh, in September. And I assume that those resources like the laptops and all the details like logging in for people who are non-students to Harper, I assume those things will just be in place, but it's an unknown for me, which I view as a potential challenge. I think that's all I have to say. Now that you guys are so smart and you solved this one so easily and quickly, disappointingly quickly, I want to give you a harder one. Would you like a harder one to go away and think about? Yes. Okay. Sure. Let me give you a harder one then. If it helps, Ed, I'm not I'm not a stranger cryptic crossword. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, that does help. You've just given me it's my favorite one. It's not the hardest one. I have one that's my favorite hardest one, but I, I can give you my favorite crossword based one. That's a good idea. Thank you for saying that. You'll bear with me for three minutes. I'll show it to you. We'll sign off and you can tell us about your progress in this chat in the coming hours, minutes, hours, or days. <clears throat> Just bear with me one second and I'll reshare my screen. Let me stop talking because you know I can't multitask when computers are involved. I should have foreseen this. I, I knew you guys were the sharpest of the sharp.
Okay, I've got it. Put that away. Going to uh, make a new document and paste that in there. I'm going to save it and then I'm going to drop it into the chat and I'll talk. I'll just show it to you and then we'll just end because we're out of time. So let me save this as browse. Puzzle day. Copy. Paste. There we go. And this one is significant. I find this one significantly harder than the other one. Um, let me drop it in the chat so that you have it. And I'll just share my screen. This isn't exactly a crossword. It's one of those word finders. So this is the puzzle. Um, sword search, you get the point. And uh, you have a box of words, and you have some numerals at the bottom, integers. Any questions? Do I have to work out what the numbers mean? Well, the answer to the puzzle is this. It's the same. I'm not including the instructions on this one, but it's exactly the same instructions that the uh, answer is a single English word. Oh, OK. OK, so hmm. I'll uh, I'll leave you with it. Enjoy. Have fun. I'm making Claire the CEO of Puzzle Day and Code Club. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. And I'll see everyone later. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye. Thank Bye. you. It looks fascinating. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> See you guys. Bye.